Hello everyone, Trix here and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening 2019. This is part 3. We have done as much as we could, overworld and side quest related. And yeah, I think there's nothing else I can say than we are actually going to have to do first dungeon this time. Gonna be honest here, second take here. Recording failed. I don't know why, it has ha hasn't happened for months. And for some reason it started happening again. I recorded, I pressed record, I did do a lot of stuff already and I suddenly saw that my recording was frozen. It was standing at five minutes something. I was already recording for five minutes. And I'm giving this warning. Normally I don't have to. Just uh, make you people think I haven't done anything. But the reason I'm saying this is... This is where the first dungeon is. Normally this is where a keyhole is, where we enter the key. And as you can see, it's already opened. Yeah, I was stupid enough not to save in between, so... But don't worry, I haven't cleared the first dungeon yet. But normally, you go here with your tail key, and this is where a keyhole is. It goes in, and then the bars that are blocking this door are lowered so we can go in. Speaking of which, let's go in. Second try. Alright, first, first stage, level 1, tail cave. Start off by going left. Right, these guys. Buzzy beetles, you might say. How do these things work? You can block them with your shield or you can just... No, not the powder, I wanted to use the sword. Apparently I don't know where my B button is anymore. And you can get a key if we kill all the enemies. Just swing your sword or push them with your shield. You can open a locked door with small keys. Of course, we know how Zelda's work. Right, further left. You have a chest and the door locks. However, if we kill all the enemies in here, the door unlocks. It's the simple matter of clean out the room and the door unlocks. And we get the compass. Now you can see where the chest and nightmare are hidden. Yeah, the nightmare is what is uh, considered the bosses in this game. They're called nightmares. This compass has a new feature. A tone will tell you if a key is nearby. Yeah, that's one uh, thing about this game. Every time a key is present in a dungeon, the compass will give you a little tone. Making you know the keys are there. I'll be quiet because the next room will have a key so you can hear it. That thing. Even a compass symbol appears in this version. In the original that was notorious because every single time you grabbed a compass... That same message will come come by again in the, in the dialogue. And the dialogue goes a little bit slower in the original version. So that becomes very annoying every time you grab a compass. But this game has faster text so it's not... Nearly as annoying, luckily. Right, there's another chest in here, I think. Let's get rid of the Stelphos. They always jump away when you slash at them, but just make sure you slash at them again before they get the chance to jump again, because of course they can't jump immediately after they land, and that's the trick of killing them. And here we get the map for this place. Like the overworld map, you press... The minus to view it, so we can see the layout of this place. And hey, it is shaped like a tail. Guess why it is called the tail cave. Har, har, har. Right, this is a one-way door. Whenever you see this with a link-shaped uh, thing in it, you know it's a one-way door. You can only access that from this side. As you can see, die. From here, we cannot access this door anymore. We are now locked in. Ah, there's a key in here. Thank you for telling us, Compass. Mini moral dorms are very annoying enemies. Especially in hero mode, because they can easily hit you. Get over here, you. Die. Give me your piece of power. So I have more power. And grab the key. Right, where else can we go? You? Ow! That was not necessary. I've or I'm already down ha half my health. Alright, a fair warning about uh, dying. I am doing 100% let's play and I consider getting the best ending a part of that. So I will go for no deaths. That means that if I die, I will reset the game. 
I will not continue with that death with deaths. Apparently that's a word. <laughs> you can still count those those deaths. Of course, I will not uh, be denying those deaths. Like, uh, oh, I died. Quickly reset. Pretend it never happened. No, they still happened. I will show them off on screen, so you don't have to worry about that. I'm not that kind of a cheater. Just mentioning, I will reset the game only because I want that best ending. And I assume that will happen a few times, because hero mode, in all honesty, is pretty hard. Don't expect to do this without dying. Right, these enemies hit them with your shield, so they flip and you can hit them. These are obviously references to Mario enemies, the spinies. Killing them will unlock a staircase. Am I still recording? This is the point where I uh, lost all my footage last time. Where it suddenly froze. Or, like I said, like I mean, it froze at the beginning because I was looking and I saw... Hmm, timer is running. Five minutes something, but I still see the screen I started at in front of the little crocodile house. Am I recording? And I suddenly started looking and apparently I had a video file of one second... And I had an audio file of five minutes. The audio recorded, but the video didn't. But apparently now it's going fine, so hopefully I don't have to redo any anything again. Right, if, if we go over here, we get the dungeon item, the Rock's Feather. It feels like your body is a lot lighter. This is the reason why I wanted to keep the X button clean. I will keep this Rock's Feather on the X button for the rest of the game, because... The Rock's Feather is the most used item by far. What does it do? I'm showing it off. It makes Link jump. Breath of the Wild is known, known for having a jump button for Link, but it definitely was not the first one. Link's Awakening made Link jump with an item. Of course, it's limited. You can't jump very far or very high. But we can jump. Hell yeah. I'm going to ignore you guys. And we can take a shortcut, because these one space gaps are actually jumpable now. So, let's... Alright, now we're going to get the next key in here. There's another key in this room. Rupees, get... Oh, a quick thing about this cracked uh, wall over there. Can't do that yet. Like many Zelda games, this is also an example where we can't get everything the first time through the first dungeon. We actually need some... Other things, in this case bombs, obviously. Cracked walls means bombs in a Zelda game. But it is at this point impossible to have bombs, so we actually have to get back later in this place. Right, now we have a rock's feather, we can actually jump this gap. If we would have come here earlier, there would have been nothing we can do. Now we can open sesame. Key, like the compass is trying to tell us. And the key is actually not a normal key, it's the Nightmare Key. Now you can open the door to the Nightmare's Lair, which is this game's boss key. In case you didn't know. Should be obvious, I explained already, the bosses in this game are called Nightmares. You will find out why later. And therefore the boss key is also named Nightmare Key. Right, use our final small get out of my face, all of you. Why can't I hit anything? I need this one, actually. I'm dying over here. Use our final small key on this door, like I was trying to say. Help. I don't like these guys, they hurt. Get out of my way. Thank you. Now I can get safely into this room. I find another puzzle. These guys. It's obvious what we need to do. Stop them on the same symbol, and we get a prize. In this case, hearts, apparently. And we get the final in-dungeon... Uh, uh, what was I trying to say? Yeah, I don't, won't say dungeon item. I was trying to say dungeon item, but that's technically the Rock's Feather. But there's a couple of items you can get only in dungeons. Dungeon map, compass, nightmare key. And this is also one, the stone beak. Now find an owl statue to fit it into. Kind of like the phone booths for Old Man Orira in the overworld. In dungeons, you have these owl statues, but you can't always check them. If you have the stone beak, you can. And it'll always give you a few hints. Like the phone booths, I will not be using them. Because I already know what I'm doing. Same reason I just uh, sat with uh, the phone booth. 
But you can actually uh, find some hints there if you in dungeons can't find your way anymore if you are stuck. Those are hint givers. So you can use them to your heart's advantage. Alright, mini boss time. Finally, mini boss. <laughs> there's not just a regular boss in dungeons, there's also a mini boss in every dungeon. Of course, this first one is easy. He tries to get hit us with his spiked little bar. We use the dungeon item, the rock's feather, to jump over it and hit him whenever we have the chance. Easy. Normally, he drops a fairy right now, so you can heal yourself. In hero mode, no fairy is dropped, so take note of that. But not only that, you also get a portal. And what does these portals do? Let me quickly show that off. It's a quick way to warp to the entrance. Whenever you beat a mini-boss, you get a little shortcut to go from entrance to the mini-boss room. In case you want to leave or have something you need to get early dungeon. Yeah. That's all I can say about it. <laughs> oh, traps. Don't mind the staircase. This is actually a place where you drop whenever you drop from the boss room. That might happen, so I... This place is scary. There's bodies hanging on the ceiling. I thought this game was considered a children's game. <laughs> Come on, game. Right, watch out for these traps. They work the same as they do in the first original... The first original Legend of Zelda, really. <laughs> the first Zelda, or the original Zelda, not both of them tricks. Anyway, if you step on their path, they will trigger, try to go for you. Use that to your advantage to avoid them. Alright, this is the boss room, obviously, or the nightmare room. Hello, Moldorm. Buzz, buzz, outsider. Where would we be without Moldorm, guys? Classical Zelda boss. The mini Moldorms were not there for nothing. As you can see, there's a couple of places where you can fall in this room. If you do, you will fall into that uh, body room we just saw. And you need to restart the entire boss fight. The same way it does in A Link to the Past, because this is clearly a carbon copy of the Link to the Past boss. Of course, the easiest boss of all. However, I'm still scared of him because this is hero mode. <laughs> and I don't have that many hearts. I'll be standing in a corner, cowardly, with my shield all the time. But I still managed to get him. Don't expect the bosses to stay this easy. But it is the first one, so of course they are going to start easy. And bosses drop heart containers, an immediate one extra heart for your meter. The maximum number of hearts increased and your health is refilled too. And that is also very important. Same way like heart pieces like I explained in the first part. Heart containers also fully heal you. Use that to your advantage. And like the owl set was an instrument we needed to get in this, in this place. That's the whole reason we were here. And here it is. The first instrument. The full moon cello. And why are we grabbing these instruments? Well, we'll get the explanation for that later. Swamp. A path opens in the blooms. These messages are always an indication of where the next dungeon is going to be. Just a little heads up. Right, with that we can continue with some more side quests. However, we of course get interrupted by Mr. Owl here. So also I'm going to need some exp do some explaining, apparently. Hoot! That is an instrument of the sirens! I have to admit, at first I did not believe you were real. That instrument, along with the seven others in the set, has the power to wake the windfish. You must collect them all. I was instructed to give you directions. Your next goal is north, in Gopanga Swamp. Hoot! Indeed! Ah, he was instructed to give us directions. Finally, some uh, little glimpse of who that guy really is. Of course, that's not going to be all. He's not going to explain everything right now. We need some mis mystery in this game. This is a Zelda game after all. Where's the mystery? We need mystery. Oh, wait, there is mystery. 
Why are you uh, moving around like that? What's going on? Hey, buddy! It's serious! Yeah, really serious! Yeah, it is! The Moblins came to the village! Yeah, that's right! A whole gang of Moblins! And then, it's for real! They all went to the house! Yeah, that house! And then they did something at Bow Wow's house! It was a really bad scene with the m, -m moblins So, I mean, uh... It might be faster to find out for yourself what happened. Yeah, I think you're right about that. <laughs> Madam Meow Meow, where is Bow Wow? Where's the big chain jump that keep, keeps attacking me when I walk past here? Hey, it's terrible! My Bow Wow was dog-napped by b -m moblins Oh, ah, please! Somebody help my poor Bow Wow! I don't know, I want to actually. <laughs> no, I will. That's actually part of the plot. Continuation. Alright, the moblins. We know the moblins were in the mysterious forest. That is where they came from. So let's just uh, take a look here. What we actually have to do here. Where is Bow Wow, Mr. Moblin? Go away. Apparently you do not have her. Die, please. All of you, die. I'm looking for a dog, who is clearly a chain chomp, but we're still calling it a dog in this game. <laughs> Bye. Right, it should be possible to take some shortcuts now. Not, now that we have the rock's feather, we can actually get to some place we normally couldn't get to. Or get there quicker. Uh, something over here. Not yet. First, we need to go here. No, you don't hit me. I do hit you. Because I can't heal myself, so I need to be careful not to get hit. Now that we have the rock's feather... Jump! Heart piece! Get! Luckily, it did not tease us for too long. Remember those heart pieces in some Zelda games you find really, really early on in the game and you just simply can't get? For the longest time. Anyway, as if this... Alright, you have these owl statues on the overworld as well. There's a couple of hints on these owl statues. However, on the, on the overworld you don't really need an, a stone beak to access them. They're not really too important. Only if you don't know what you're doing. But I do. Alright, like I was trying to say, this door is a clear indication that there are... That this definitely is the Moblin hideout. So, let's go in here. Eh? Who's this suspicious, suspicious, oh, words, suspicious looking runt? Okay, boys, let's get rid of him. Yeah, this was clearly the Moblin hideout. As if that portal wasn't obvious enough. Oh, four of them at once. I foresee death here. For myself, I mean. <laughs> Unless I do this strategically. He did hit me. He can hit me once. I have more than one heart. Even though I can't heal that, so I need to be careful. Oh, big boss. You must be an assassin sent by Madam Meow Meow to rescue the mud. You came here to get me, but it is I who will get you. Well, we'll see about that. Oh, of course I need spin attack. Oh, big arrow. Oh, spear. Could be both of them. Come on. Don't throw your spears at me. Yeah, you can hit them regularly as well, but spin attack does double damage. I don't think I've mentioned that quite yet. I think these big spears do two hearts of damage, so do be careful for them. They do one heart regularly. But this is not regularly. This is hero mode. No. Just make him charge. Get out of the way so he charges into the wall. And when he is stunned, you can hit him. As you saw, you cannot hit him when he's not stunned. I tried that a couple of times. And there we go. Double damage takes quick care of him. Always use your spin attack if an enemy gives you the chance. And here we have the Mutt. You saved Bow Wow, what a fearsome beast. And we get our own Chain Chomp for a few moments. This is pretty fun. You can actually do a lot of... Uh, Weird stuff if you run around on the overworld with Bow Wow. I think that is a little bit of a waste of time in a let's play, so forgive me if I do not do that. Ooh. Hoot! 
That is a fearsome looking animal you have there. Do not forget, the next instrument is in Gopanga Swamp. He's trying to say we can only get into the second dungeon with Bow Wow, because that is actually a thing. Alright, we have a few heart pieces to get, but first... Who are you? Hey, you made it out here. That speaks well of you. Maybe you can help me out with a little job. I'm Dampy, and my job around this island is to dig up interesting stuff. When you have some time to spare, come see me in my shack over there. With over there, he means over there. This is something for later, as he said, we have some job to do, but he is actually very important. It is a very major side quest in this game that will be introduced at a later point. And it is only in this game, it is added in this game, but I will only talk about that when I get around to that. For now, this episode is done. 21 minutes has passed, so I think this is enough for today. I will see you tomorrow, and I will continue, probably even start doing the second dungeon, and um, we'll see how it goes. Anyway, we've got the first instrument, so progress is happening, people. <laughs> Thanks for watching, Treeks out.